everyone, welcome to the ranking, and welcome to my ranking of Iso Takahata's films. Yes, I've done a lot of rankings for a lot of great Japanese anime directors, and I forgot about Iso Takahata. Yes, I've done Hayao Miyazaki, Makoto Shinke, Mimura Hosodo, but now it's time to talk Iso Takahata. Iso Takahata has directed quite a few uh, Japanese animated films. He's done a few shorts and like directed directed TV, directed TV um, animated films and stuff. Some of which I have never seen or in, never even really heard of and stuff. I'm only going to be I'm only going to be ranking his big films, his bigish films, films that pretty much most people like anime fans have seen stuff. So. Some of his, like, obscure ones and, uh, short films I am not going to be counting in this ranking. I'm only, I'm only going to be ranking his five big films. So, yeah, let's get to it. Here's my ranking of all of Isa Takahata's films from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get started. Coming at number five is My Neighbor, The Amadas. Yes, My Neighbor, The Amadas is definitely his weakest film. It's not a bad film by no means. It's got good animation, good style, so it's interesting characters, funny moments, but... It's forgettable. I remember watching this movie maybe three or four years ago and stuff when I was trying to watch all the more obscure anime films. And this one's funny, enjoyable, lighthearted. I'd say good for some anime fans and stuff, but it's forgettable. I barely remember what happens in this film. I watched it only three years ago. There's a few, uh, like, uh, Miyazaki films I've only seen once, but I still remember them and that have an impact on me. I've seen only Nakasuka and the Valley in the Wind only once, but I remember that film. It's a memorable film. This one is not. It's enjoyable. It's got a good style to it. It's got great animation. It's got decent and likable characters, but it's not memorable, and that's why, in my opinion, it's his weakest film. Coming in number four is Only Yesterday. Only Yesterday, actually, I did review this movie on my channel, actually, just a little bit ago. I think, like, it Almost two years ago, actually. Wow. God, I feel old. But anyways, uh, Only Yesterday is actually a really, really great film. I thought this was a wonderful film, a great character study, a very interesting, very uh, harsh dose of reality in this film. It's a good coming-of-age story about this girl and her family, her very, very strict family, but that's the culture she lives in and stuff. And there's also a romance in the film with her and a boy and everything, and it's just a very realistic film, and I really enjoyed this film. I loved the lead character. I loved how it showed her life in a very realistic way, not in a very cheesy way, or a very corny way, or a formulaic way. It is very realistic because of the culture and her family. She wasn't allowed to do a lot of things that people did in their everyday lives and stuff, stuff that she wanted. She always wanted, like, freedom and everything, and... Yeah, the romance and everything she has in the film is okay, but the central focus is her life and her family and stuff and her growing up. And it's just a really, really great character study. And the white animation they use in this film is so good because a lot of it is all in flashes and stuff because there's a lot of flashbacks and stuff. So a lot of things uh, transition weird and even how the pacing is laid out and how the editing is laid out in the film because a lot of it is through memories. And... Memories are mostly images that we have in our minds and stuff, and that's how they show a lot of her backstory through uh, obscure images and like there's always like these weird white backgrounds they use, and it's very fascinating. And again, it's so realistic and it's incredibly well made. This is a fantastic film. What Isia Takahata did with this film, how he wrote and directed it, was incredibly well done. Really well structured, and I think it's a lovely film and very overlooked. I know anime fans have seen it, but people in general, in general, should see Only Yesterday. It is a great film. Coming to number three is Pom Poco. Pom Poco is delightful. This movie is funny, entertaining, really enjoyable. I love the story of these raccoons trying to defend their land against the humans because the humans are destroying their houses and their trees and stuff. So they basically have. Uh, to defend their land, and these raccoons have, like, weird powers. They can shapeshift into humans and stuff. Some of them look like little superheroes and stuff. So it's up to the raccoons to fight against the humans like a bunch of fucking badasses. Probably the coolest, most badass raccoons I've seen in a film. And this is such an entertaining, delightful film with great characters. You have J.K. Simmons, Jonathan Taylor Toy, and Jonathan Taylor Toy, Jonathan Taylor Toy, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. 
the Taylor toy. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, yeah, they're all on this film. Hey, do a good job. And yeah, this is just a very entertaining, very funny film. There's a lot of great humor, and there's a lot of dark stuff in this film, like a lot of dark shit, a lot of characters die in this film, and just you don't expect it to happen in a film like this. And yeah, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Um, yeah, there's something in this movie that is so weird and really fucked up, and I have to address it. Even if you haven't seen this film yet, you gotta know before getting into this film. The raccoons in this film, they have this power they use, and basically they use their testicles as parachutes and pouches and weapons. Their testicles expand, and they look like big parachutes and in pouches they put stuff in and they use their testicles as weapons against the humans. I'm not fucking shitting you. They legit use their testicles as weapons. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah, it, that legit happens and it's 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 weird and crazy and fucked right up, but it's 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 something to, it's something you gotta see to believe. And yeah, it was weird. That's that's my I guess only issue with the film. <laughs> they use testicle. That's mostly in the Japanese version, the, the English dub, which I have not watched. I've only watched the Japanese version, and I heard they got rid of the testicle thing. <laughs> and yeah, but. Yeah, there's that. Anyways, the film itself is great. Great animation, great comedy, great characters, great story. Love the film. It's a great film. Coming at number two is The Tale of Princess Kaguya. Yes, The Tale of Princess Kaguya, or The Tale of Princess Kaguya, I used to say. I think it's Kaguya. The Tale of Princess Kaguya. This, great film. A uh, great film. A woman that was made, a girl made from a plant, given to this family. She becomes the princess of the kingdom and stuff. Great responsibility. She doesn't want the responsibility. She wants to go back to her normal mundane life and stuff and yeah this film is beautiful the story is nothing grand or amazing and stuff the voice acting is good nothing like oh just mind-blowing stuff the reason this is number two is this is this movie is one of the most beautifully animated films i have like legit ever seen in japanese animation this entire film feels like a portrait feels like i'm in an art museum when i watch this film it is so beautiful it's still a good story, and it's very smart, and there's very thought-provoking themes in the film, and the character is a very complex and interesting and likable character. All that is good and stuff, but all of it is just, it's good. It's nothing amazing, but it's good. What makes it uh, a superior film than the other films I mentioned is the animation. The animation is perfection. Just, it is gorgeous. It is amazing. Like, watching the animation in this film is just, again, it is true art. It is art. Especially the scene when she runs out of the kingdom and it's this big running sequence. It feels like I'm watching, like, a Van Gogh painting, like, flushing right by me. Like, right in front of my eyes is just, like, a masterpiece of artwork. And it's just her running in the forest. <laughs> Masterful. It's just beautiful to look at. It's a good story with good characters, but the animation... Perfection, and that's why it's number two. And my number one favorite Isa Takahata film is, it's obvious, it's Grave of the Firefly. It's Grave of the Firefly. What, what else would it be? I think this is like everyone's favorite. It's Grave of the fucking Fireflies. It is amazing. It's both brother and sister surviving Hiroshima and... Can't spoil it, yeah. Every time I talk about this movie, I never spoil this film because it ruins the whole magic of the film. It ruins the story for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. It ruins the meaning of the plot. It ruins everything. It ruins the surprise. I don't know what to say. It's a surprise at the ending of the film and stuff. And can't spoil anything. It's just about this brother and sister, and they're going through this tragic event, and it is dark. It is really dark. It is brutal. It is gritty. It is very realistic, and it's a fascinating character study. It will leave you your heart breaking and your tears watering. It is just such a sad, emotionally hard-hitting film. The characters are fascinating. The brother comes, comes off a bit unlikable at times, 
but I understand his character. I understand his motivation. I understand what he has to do to save himself and his little sister. And the sister is a fantastic character. Some of the side characters are, again, really realistic portrayals of these people during this event. And it's amazing. It feels like I'm watching almost like a biopic, and it's not. It's a fictional story, but it feels so real, and it feels like you're not even watching an animated film. It feels like I'm watching real people going through this really heart-wrenching and tragic event, and it's brilliantly done. It's wonderfully structured, and it's wonderfully executed, and brilliantly, brilliantly uh, directed by uh, Iso Takahara. He did such a great job, and it's hands down easily his best film he has made. Just hands down. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Iso Takahata's films, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this ranking? If not, what is your ranking of all of Iso Takahata's films, in your opinion, from your least favorite to your favorite? Comment below, let me know, and as always, if you this video, please subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.